Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. This is what the Lord showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall with a plumb line in his hand. The Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? A plumb line, I said. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the middle of my people Israel. I will never again forgive them. The shrines of Isaac will be made desolate. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, reported to Israel's king Jeroboam, Amos has plotted against you within the house of Israel. The land isn't able to cope with everything that he is saying. Amos has said, Jeroboam will die by the sword and Israel will be forced out of its land. Amaziah said to Amos, you who see things, go, run away to the land of Judah, eat your bread there and prophesy there but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's holy place and this royal house. Amos answered Amaziah, I am not a prophet, nor am I a prophet's son, but I am a shepherd and a trimmer of sycamore trees. But the Lord took me from shepherding the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank you, God. I will listen, O Lord God, to what you are saying. For you are taking peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. To release the salvation is very near to those who are you. Let your glory be dwell in. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us, in, blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing that comes from heaven. God chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless in God's presence before the creation of the world. God destined us to be his adopted children through Jesus Christ because of his love. This was according to his goodwill and plan and to honor his glorious grace that he has given to us freely through the son whom he loves. We have been ransomed through his son's blood and we have forgiveness for our failures based on his overflowing grace, which he poured over us with wisdom and understanding. God revealed his hidden design to us, which is according to his goodwill and the plan that he intended to accomplish through his son. This is what God planned for the climax of all times, to bring all things together in Christ, the things in heaven along with the things on earth. We have also received an inheritance in Christ. We were destined by the plan of God who accomplishes everything according to his design. We are called to be an honor to God's glory because we were the first in, to hope in Christ. You too heard the word of, Christ, of truth in Christ which is the good news of your salvation. You were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit because you believed in Christ. The Holy Spirit is the down payment on our inheritance, which is applied toward our redemption as God's own people, resulting in the honor of God's glory. 
Hear what the peop- Spirit is saying to God's people. God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Herod the king heard about these things because the name of Jesus had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and this is why miraculous powers are at work through him. Others were saying, he is Elijah. Still others were saying, he is a prophet, like one of the ancient prophets. But when Herod heard these rumors, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised to life. He said this because Herod himself had arranged to have John arrested and put in prison because of Herodias, the wife of Herod's brother, Philip. Herod had married her, but John told Herod, it's against the law for you to marry your brother's wife. So Herodias had it in for John. She wanted to kill him, but she couldn't. This was because Herod respected John. He regarded him as a righteous and holy person, so he protected him. John's words greatly confused Herod, yet he enjoyed listening to him. Finally, the time was right. It was on one of Herod's birthdays when he had prepared a feast for his high-ranking officials and military officers and Galilee's leading residents. Herod's daughter Herodias came in and danced, thrilling Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the young woman, ask me whatever you wish and I will give it to you. Then he swore to her, whatever you ask, I will give to you even as much as half of my kingdom. She left the banquet hall and said to her mother, what should I ask for? John the Baptist head, Herodias replied. Hurrying back to the ruler, she made her request. I want you to give me John the Baptist's head on a plate right this minute. Although the king was upset because of his solemn pledge and his guest, he didn't want to refuse her, so he ordered a guard to bring John's head. The guard went to the prison, cut off John's head, and brought his head on a plate and gave it to the young woman, and she gave it to her mother. When John's disciples heard what had happened, they came and took his dead body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of Christ. Amos, what do you see? A plumb line. St. Michael's, what do you see? I'm not sure, so I'll ask how many of you have actually seen a plumb line in real life before? Oh, quite a few, but some of you maybe not. So let me do a little explaining. Plumb lines are used in building construction to make sure walls are truly vertical and lines are straight. They are usually made Um, using a long piece of string and a weight tied to the end. The weight on my plumb line is stainless steel. In the olden days, the weight might be a stone or a heavy bob of metal, such as lead, which is how we get the word plumb. It comes from the Latin word for lead, which is plumbum. In the Old Testament, the idea of a plumb line was used as a metaphor in different ways. In 2 Kings, a plumb line was used as a moral standard for Israel's kings, which they failed to live up to. The prophet Isaiah used it as a measure of the justice and righteousness expected of God's people, which they flouted. uh, Let's see. In our reading from Amos today, the plumb line is used to illustrate the people of Israel's failure to keep their covenant with God. In all three of these examples, the plumb line is a metaphorical standard for measuring obedience uh, by God's people, either individually or as a society, to God's commandment to worship the Lord, God of Israel, only, and to conduct their lives according to God's standards. In our reading from Mark today, John the Baptist serves as an excellent example of someone holding up a metaphorical plumb line to someone in power, just like the prophets of the Old Testament would do. 
In this case, by declaring to King Herod that it was unlawful for Herod to marry his brother's wife, John makes it clear to King Herod that his conduct is violating God's standards. Herod's response to John's holding up the plumb line, so to speak, was to attempt to silence him by putting him in prison, which goes to show there are people out there who mistakenly think you can get rid of God's plumb line by getting rid of the people who hold it up. Clearly, King Herod knew that John was speaking the truth. Yet Herod chose to base his contact, his conduct, not on the plumb line, but on the approval he would receive from the people around him, the high-ranking officials, the leaders of the Galilean society, and his wife, because they were the ones who would help him stay in power under the Roman government. It is easy for us to pass judgment on King Herod for the decisions he made because they are so clearly wrong. But I would say that we're in the middle of living our messy, busy, chaotic lives. Things out there aren't always so clear. I think if we are honest with ourselves, we would each admit that we have all made decisions based on social approval that go against God's plumb lines in our lives. I can think of a couple of instances in my life in recent years when by God's grace I experienced a moment of clarity when I saw God's plumb line and that insight enabled me to change course. The first is that well, not too long ago, I became aware of the excessive amount of time I was spending on social media and the fact that social media companies were making money off of me at the expense of my time. So I had to ask myself, is this how the Lord wants me to spend my time? The answer was no. So I got off social media. The second example had to do with my consumption of alcohol. When I thought about the fact that there are no health benefits to consuming alcohol and that alcohol addiction destroys people's lives and tears families apart and that a lot of people are making a ton of money off marketing and selling the stuff, I decided I couldn't in good conscience participate in supporting the alcohol industry anymore so I quit buying it and drinking it, and I don't allow it in my home anymore. These are but two areas that I've come to terms with uh, regarding how I spend my time and money. There are others, and you probably have some of your own. However, at this point, what I'm really struggling with is my role in addressing what God's Word says about taking care of people who are living in poverty, which is a major theme in both the Old and New Testaments. Lately, I have found myself asking, how is it possible that our country, the United States, one of the richest countries in the world, has so many people living in dire poverty? In Arkansas, according to a 2024 report, by the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation and the United Way, 47% of the households are struggling to afford their basic needs. Let me say it again, 47%, almost half of Arkansas families cannot meet their basic expenses. What is going on in our society that makes this even possible. There's a plumb line here that I need to understand with greater clarity. So how do I keep myself from getting distracted while paying attention to this plumb line in my life? More specifically, what do I need to do about it? 
how do I respond with my time and money so I can do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with my God? I need some help here. Won't you join me in clarifying the plumb lines in our lives?